Well, hi, everyone. hi everybody. My name is Pax Quinones and this is... Ken. This is... Magdalena. David. Adrian. Yeah. Adrian. <laughs> and we're here, just like we said a little bit earlier, we're going to be saying Psalms chapter 91. So make sure that you have your questions ready or comments. Uh, we will be, we'll be answering those questions and we'll be able to see it. And then we also like to appreciate seeing some of your, your own personal insight in chapter 91 in Psalms. Amen. Um, so Amen. we are just gonna maybe just say a little bit something about ourselves. Uh, say, say who? What is your favorite color and what is your favorite hobby to do? There we go. Oh boy, favorite color probably is blue. My name's Ken, actually, and uh, my favorite hobby of all time was water skiing. Water skiing. All right. <laughs> you did it professionally, right? Uh, similar. Similar. <laughs> all right. Blue. My favorite color is blue, and I love the oil paint. Oil paint? Mm -hmm, that's cool. Oh, what? We have, we we have, have a push? comment. Oh, what's the comment? She's saying hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. hi. <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? Um, Abek, Abek. Oh, that's my wife. Abek. Yeah. Oh, it's your wife, Abek. Hey, so Abek. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me Glad see. you're with us. I me. promise not to embarrass you. <laughs> A little. Uh, just say something. Just say something. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> my name is Eliab. Um, my favorite color is green, and my favorite hobby is basketball. I think I think that's that's a given. All right, David. My favorite color is green, Lincoln green, ladies and lasses, and I also love anything outdoors. We have Annalisa saying hi, everyone. Hey, Annalisa. Hey, Annalisa. Hi. And then finally, Adrian. Ernesto's doing his homework. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> my colors are fuchsia and purple. I love knitting. I'm what, kidding. No, what kind of color do you know? Is that a color? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yes, it is. What kind of color? I'm just kidding. No, I love uh, dark red, and I love anything uh, fitness. We have Anna saying hola. Oh, hey, Anna. Oh, hey, Anna. Oh, Anna. Anna. Oh, cool. Well then, guys, now um, for our Northeast family, we're going to be starting chapter 91. And normally we would have prayer meeting today. Um, but, of course, because of the situation happening around our world, um, it's best that we stay indoors. Um, but luckily, we were able to just keep it under five people. and Six feet. Well, <laughs> yeah, six feet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. six feet. We're like rough six inches. <laughs> roughly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just no one spit when they talk. We'll yeah. be all right, yeah? Um, but today, who's saying hi? We have Ruth Charles saying, thank you for blessing us with the prayer meeting. Uh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise hey, Ruth. Hey, Ruth. Thank you for Well, we us. hope to see some of your comments on Psalm chapter 91. So we're going to get into it. Um, before we do get into it, um, we're going to have a word of prayer. Um, we any, any blessings that you've seen? I know everything is kind of crazy. Any blessings that you've guys seen this week before we, before we start Psalm 91? I saw people sharing what they were buying instead of fighting for it in the store. That's actually really cool. Yeah. Because I was at Walmart the other day and I saw some lady just rushing in. She was panicking over toilet paper. Yes. So anything like that would, would be helpful. Yeah. Anything else? Any blessings? We, we were blessed to get a few extra provisions for uh, some people that didn't have any. And that was really it was yeah. a Amen. blessing to be able to part, help somebody at this time. Yeah. Patience. I have four <laughs> children and a wife, and yeah, I haven't lost it yet. Praise <laughs> God. Praise Is that God. true, Becky? <laughs> Becky, Becky will tell us if it's real or not. Uh, who's saying hi? Albert. Albert. Hey, Albert. Albert. Hey, Albert. 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 Welcome, Albert. Yeah. David, any blessings you saw this week? Other than what I, I said previously about um, uh, um, I do Uber part time, so meeting a lot of different people and being able to share some tracks and, and booklets and yeah. share my faith. So it's been wow. real blessing for that. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And I, I, I have a blessing too. I told you guys earlier, but I'll tell you guys over here. But me and my sister went to Walmart, um, and as we were driving out uh, to, to go back home, I saw this kid, and he's just carrying like all these bags of groceries. And, like, this dude's, like, a weightlifter like Adrian. Like, you know, he's really trying his best. Um, but uh, we pulled him to the side. I was like, hey, man, do you need a ride? And so we picked him up, and uh, and he was just, like, you could tell, like, he was just so appreciative of of what we did. And after I dropped him off, I gave him my card to say, if you ever need anything, and, like, you could see that there was tears in his eyes. And so it was really cool to see that, you know, people are needing a blessing, and they're needing to see Jesus, and we can be that for them. Amen. And God can use anybody. So, Amen. so uh, let's, yeah, you have something? I'd just like to say uh, real quickly, it's a blessing to have uh, Elib, Pastor Elib's sister here with us. Yeah, yeah it is. Nana, yes, she's it the is. one that's uh, doing all the video and the connection, and, and my wife, too, is, mm -hmm. is here. And we just thank you. Thank you so much for being here for us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Alright, so we're going to pray now, and then after we're jumping into Psalm 91. So have your Bibles ready, or your iPhones, or whatever you're using, and let's, let's dig into the Word of God. Father in Heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to just study your Word. And Father, in these times, this is what we need the most. And so God, I pray that your Holy Spirit just resides in each and every one of our hearts. And Lord, even the viewers watching, Father, may they also see what your Word has to say, and how it can apply to their lives. And Father... The most important thing that we can do, though, is, Father, as we learn, Father, may we go teach somebody else, whether that's sharing this video or, Father, whether that's meeting someone and just expressing and showing the love of God through our actions, Father. Yes, that is yes. what we need to do yes, as Christians yes. and, Father, yes. just as Adventists. And so, yes. Father, we pray this and we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, guys. Amen. What's up? Who's we have Aaliyah saying Judy with the... Hand sign, the okay sign, and then Roxanne saying, hi, everyone. So good to see you all. That's awesome. Amen. Thank hey, you. Roxanne. Hey, Aaliyah. All right, so Psalms 91, guys. We're going to start with verse 1, and uh, if something jumps out at you, or or we'll stop at ch every verse, and we're going to go for around 30 minutes or so to our viewers, and then we're going to just stop at whatever 30 minutes starts uh, stops at. So let's start with chapter 91, verse 1. I'll start it off, and we'll go in a circle. Chapter 91, verse 1 says, The one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. What do you guys think about just verse 1? And also, if you guys have any questions or any comments, please please share, okay? So so what's what's verse 1? What do you guys think that means? Or, I mean, within the context. I believe that the secret place means like a hiding place, mm -hmm. like a place of refuge. Mm -hmm. He provides that, doesn't he? He provides we, that When for we us. Uh, acquaint ourselves with him, he'll he'll provide that um, dwelling place, and he'll dwell with with us. Yeah, that's a comforting thought. Yeah. And and the key word here is the word shadow. Is a shadow ever going to escape you? No. No. My children are like my shadows. They follow me everywhere to the bathroom. Every. <laughs> right? But you know, and the thing is, is that where God's at. You know, and if you're there, it, it, like I said, it's shadow. It's not good. You're not gonna lose it. Yeah, it's always gonna be right there, which I find very comforting. Yeah, that's really cool. I kind of like about I said this earlier, but I really like the fact that it says under the protection of the Most High. So, in other words, it's alluding to the fact that there is persecution. You know, that's true. There, that's true. there is gonna be some hardship, because if there was no hardship, there would be no need for protection. No. Right. So God sees the fact that he needs to be our protector because he sees that people are going to be attacking us or situations or, or pestilence or corona, you know? Mm -hmm. Like we have today. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so much more, you know. Corona, I think, is just, it's just truly like revealing some of, the, some of the pain and some of the trials that we're having in our hearts that we've kept down and we're suppressing. And this is kind of bringing it to the surface. Mm -hmm. I believe that as well. Yeah. Any other comments or any? Oh, we got a comment? We do have a comment. Aaliyah just wanted to say thank you. She said that you know what's going on with her dad and the difficult times that they're in right now. Yeah. And that things like this keep her going. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. And we're still praying as a church all understands your situation, Aaliyah. We're praying for your dad. And I know God can do miracles. And, and whatever God chooses to do, God will God will give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. And he says here that he's going to be like a shadow like Adrian was saying. Mm -hmm. He's never going to leave you. Yes. You know? And now your dad's not alone either, so. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. Amen. All right, well, let's go to chap verse, chapter, I mean, chapter 91, verse 2. All right, I'm going to read. Okay, it says, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Hmm. Hmm. Read 1 and 2 together. I think it will go hand in hand. Yes, it yes, it does. Yeah. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Mm. What, does that, what does that mean to you guys? Anything stick out? I like what Marie Lena said earlier about you know the secret place being that, that special place that we can go to God. And, and, and it can be anywhere, like what Adrian was saying earlier. You know, wherever we find ourselves in. You know, the psalmist says in Psalm 56, verse 3, at what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Mm. And trust means believing. You know, because in this world, it's always the old adage is, you know, seeing is believing. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Seeing is believing. But it's the other way around. Believing for the Christian, for the believer in God, believing is seeing. Mm. Mm. Faith. Faith. Yeah. 
and the, and the big word refuge here, whenever I feel, again, like you said, worried, or I'm afraid, I'm separated, I, I feel like I didn't do what I'm supposed to do, I can always come back and he'll be that refuge for me. He will be that mm -hmm. fortress where I, I, I know there's strength in there. And in my weakness, I can find strength in him to, mm -hmm. to give me that strength. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And it looks here we have a comment by Albert. Albert says, these are not difficult times, but great. Why? We are one huge step closer to Jesus' second coming. Mm -hmm. And it says, let's be ready and inform the world he's coming. Amen. Amen. That's very yeah. true. And do we have another one? Holding on to his promises. Absolutely. I think I think I think what uh what Roxanne you just said it ties perfectly with verse two because it says he declares. It's not God declaring this, but it's David saying I will say concerning the Lord, who is my refuge. And so sometimes, and, 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 and like you were saying, Roxanne, you need to hold on to it. You need to declare and you need to say it with everything that you got, even though everything around you doesn't look like it. You need to declare and you need to hold on to it, that God is my refuge and he is my strength. And like Adrian was saying, it doesn't matter where. Like, it, doesn't, it really doesn't matter where because can God, can God go... Any is 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 there a place where God cannot go? No, no, not at all. Is there a rock that God cannot see under? No, no. you know, so it doesn't matter what situation God will show up if you call upon Him. You know, if you declare. You know? Amen. Well, that says that God is faithful. Mm. The Psalms ninety one is about about His faithfulness and about His refuge, no matter what it is we're going through right. at any time. Yeah. Any other any other comments? No? All right, let's, let's go on to the next one. We're going to go to verse 3. It was a really good one, too. Adrian? And in verse 3, it says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Mm. Go ahead, read that one more time, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you one more time. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Mm. I got a different version. It goes like this. He himself will rescue you from the bird trap and from the destruction, destructive plagues. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think that means to you? <laughs> the COVID-19. The COVID-19. Pastor, read that text again. Okay. He will rescue you from the bird trap, from the destructive plague. And I think that's what pestilence means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine you says know, deadly pestilence. Yeah. yeah. For a long time, I thought pestilence in the Bible meant like a smell, mm -hmm. like a bad smell. Yeah. That's but I sad. heard a commentator. I heard a commentator mm -hmm. this week say that pestilence was really about disease, yeah. about mm -hmm. what's going exactly. on today. Exactly. So, this verse says that he will deliver us from all of that, even if we're stricken by it. He's going to be by our side. He's never going to abandon us. Mm -hmm. Well, any other any other comments on on this on this verse? It's really good. Well, saying that that's kind of where I go back to where, you know, he's delivering you from this pestilence, and again, it's that we're gonna be going through difficult times. We're gonna struggle. We're gonna fall, but yet, like I said, it's having that peace in those difficulties. Mm. You, you, when you're feeling knowing that God's by your side, regardless of the situation, right? regardless of what all these families are going through here in this city throughout the world is that again following Christ he will um, give you that peace that I know I, I can go through this because I know he's with me exactly yeah. Yeah. amen yeah. Yeah. all right uh, Kenny will you read verse 5 actually can you read 4 and 5 4 let and 5 go, together yeah let them go together okay I'd like first of all if you don't mind yeah. to say hi to Tony my Wife, sister, my sister-in-law, <laughs> who knows Maria Lena, hey, Tony. and our pastor Eva, and David, and Adrian. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Hey, hey Tony. Nice to have you. That's my mama's goes. name. I feel so famous right now. <laughs> <laughs> so many people are meeting. Yeah. Okay. It says, "He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His trust shall be thy shield and buckler." Mm. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Particularly for me, you know, I, the people here know that I was in Vietnam during the war as a medic in, uh, in combat. And my grandmother, before I left, read me this 91st Psalm and asked me to, to continue to read it, and it did. It brought me great comfort. 
But this place right here where he says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Mm. You have to claim, if we trust, we claim these promises, that, 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 they, that he will be faithful. And just like an eagle or a bird, they cover their babies mm -hmm. and protect them with their wings. And uh, it says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night or for the arrow that flyeth by day. Uh, I think we still have fear, but we do have that trust. And they give us a comfort, Yeah, I believe. Yeah. I, I really like, oh, and it looks like uh, Stephen Jackson. Stephen Jackson, what's up, man? Good to see you. Tell your wife and kids we all say hi. And we hope yep. you guys are doing okay. Amen. Glad yeah. you're here. Tune in. But, but Steve, let me tell you something, man. It's really cool to see that the fact that in verse 4, in 91 verse 4, it says, His faithfulness will be a protective shield. And it's like so many things fail us. Oh, I can't tell you how many things have failed me in my life. Oh, amen. <laughs> me too. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm half or one-third of some of you guys' ages. <laughs> Uh, don't look at me like that, David. That was bad. He's going to have white hair after this whole yeah. call. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like, I love how it says his faithfulness will be our shield. It's because his faithfulness is never ending. Yeah. There's, there's never a, a moment where God just lets go. Or there's never a moment where God says, I'm tired. Amen. But yeah. he, his faithfulness will be our shield. Thus we know. That no matter what we're going through, God is still faithful. That he hasn't stopped being faithful when it looks like it. He's still faithful. It's just at the certain moment of time, it doesn't look like it. But we have to believe and we have to trust yes. that he is faithful because of what his word says. And it'll be on his time, not ours. Yeah, it's tough sometimes to believe that. That's yes. the hardest thing. You know, and as human beings, we're, um, we've been conditioned to look for the negative things. Mm. And so when we ask God repeatedly for something, or like Pastor said, you know, our experiences are what make us. And so the experiences that we've encountered is what sets who we are. Mm. But sometimes we feel like these experiences are so much and they're so heavy and so overwhelming. And we think he doesn't listen to us. Mm. But he says repeatedly in his promises that his mercies are new every morning. Mm -hmm. But because we've been conditioned to see the negative and to, and to focus on the negative, mm. you know, what people think about me, what, um, what they did to me, what I went through, what, you know, I lost my job, I'm sick, my mom's dying, whatever it is. So we focus on those negatives and we forget to look for all of the new mercies that he showers us with Amen. every single morning. And this is what the Psalms is saying. This Psalm is saying it's reassuring us that no matter what it is we go through, he's right there with us if we let him. Praise God. We have someone there. Um, it looks like, let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, Roxanne. Roxanne, what did she say? God does not want us to have the spirit of fear. No, Amen. No, no, he doesn't. Fear not. Yeah, fear not. I like it. Fearless. The thing is, the thing is, you will not fear the terror of the night. Oh, I think it's your phone, David. So wow, it's all good. Wow, it better be Jesus. I'm coming. Jesus, the Lord has come. And the Lord has come. The Lord has come. But I really like this idea of the fact that, like how you're saying, it it, it doesn't say, it, but it alludes to it constantly. You will not fear the terror of the night, but the terror of the night. But it doesn't yeah, mean you have to fear. Here. But it's no longer a terror. No, it's not. Because who is beside you? Jesus. I mean, you go a few Psalms back, even though I walk through the valley of the and shadow the of shadow death. Of death. Yeah. Psalms 23. Yeah, the, wa yeah. the walk is a is verb. Go back to the very first verse. Yes. Exactly. Dwelling in the shelter of the secret place of the Most High. And so it, this, the terror of the night is going to be there, but we don't have to fear it. And it, even if we do fear initially, I mean, how That's many of you, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say I've been fearless because I've been baptized in Christ Jesus. If anything, I've become more fearful at times. Yeah, oh, me too. Man. Because I feel like the terror of the night comes that much more. Mm -hmm. After I've truly opened my eyes to that which is spiritual and not just this, mm -hmm. this reality that I live in. Man, but the thing is, God is big enough to handle my fear. And God Amen. is patient enough Amen. to see me through it. And then it's saying, eventually I can get to a place where even though it may come, I will fear no evil because your rod... And your staff will be there to come from you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we we have you. four comments. Okay, let's Very see. Nice. This is comforting. Praise God. Hey, everyone. You should always do this with every prayer meeting. I think that would be really cool. We're going to 
It seems like the coronavirus has, has pushed us with our technology here at Northeast. <laughs> That's Big, awesome. Good things coming. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, um, and we're happy you were actually able to stay despite you were about to be deployed just a few weeks ago. It's a blessing that that we have a brother, Dirksen. Um, he was going to be deployed, but now he gets okay. to stay with his family. So yeah, it is a blessing. Yeah. It says, on this, I feel that we need to be be faithful always. And he will always have a shield on us always. Yeah, Tony, that's absolutely right. Tony said this, to repeat on this, I feel that we need to be faithful always, and he will have his shield on us always. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. Most definitely. We have another one? And then Aliyah says, I've accepted the fact that my dad could possibly pass away soon. Mercy. Mm. But I'm not scared anymore. No matter what happens, trust in God always. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We praise the Lord. And the thing is, it's true. And I, I, I think it's hard for me to say, you know, because... When you're in the midst of it, it's hard to believe, you know. And and at times, nothing can really can really help you. I mean, Miss Knight knows she's a, a, a registered uh, social worker, counselor. And when someone's str- seeing the the reality of death right in front of them, it's hard to believe that. And saying that it's not a goodbye; it's just a see you later. But that's why we have to declare what the Bible says, yes. that in the blink of an eye, like when the trump of God will sound, the dead in Christ will rise first. As we have to hold on to those promises, knowing that God is going to be faithful, even if we pass away. But then this corruptible will put on, you know. Incorruption. Yeah. We have to just hold on to that. Yes. David has something. What's up, David? Just a text to share here in Psalm 30, verse uh, 5 and 6. Sing praises to the Lord, you his godly ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. Praise mm-hmm. Praise God. And then uh, uh, Mr. Dershin said this, yeah, deployment is completely canceled. Going to be here for a few more years. Well, praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise I know God. your wife and your two boys. Thanks be to God. Be Answer the prayer. Now I don't have to preach. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get you a preach. Nah, funny guy. <laughs> well, it seems like we got eight more minutes. So we're going to move on to the next uh, next uh, set of verses. We're going to go six and seven. Miss Knight, can you read six and seven? What's up? I just need to show you this. Yeah, what's up? Okay. All right, okay, cool. All right, then. Go six and seven. Six and seven says, A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only... D- did I read wrong? The six. Uh, six. 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 I'm sorry. It says, Nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Mm. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Wow. Mm. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I got a tough question, guys. Because I know there have been some Christians that may have been, may have been, may have had the coronavirus mm. or maybe have fallen to other pestilence such as cancer, like Sister Rosalind's daughter, you know, and other things like that. Then what does it mean that the fact is that the pestilence will not reach you? How do we look at that in the full context of of the whole Bible and just everything? I mean, Jesus was crucified, was he not? Yes, he yes. Was. So what does that mean? It says, it says before that, don't be afraid. Because basically, that I'm going to be with you. I've been there. I'll walk with you. Mm. I'll carry you. I'll be with you through that time. Yeah. And it, um, it's hard. So the question, I'm asking you guys as well, our viewers, before Adrian has a comment, but the question is, the Bible says here, the thousands fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. Mm-hmm. The pestilence will not reach you. Yet I've, I've heard of people that pestilence has reached them. Yes. And, and that they have endured so much suffering. So what does it mean in the context of the whole Bible? That God says pestilence will not reach you, but to some it does. How does it mean? David, do you have something or Adrian? Well, yeah, I was about to yeah. say uh, that, you could, that David could read for us in Romans 8, 28. And this might answer it, hopefully. Go ahead, David. And we know that all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Read that, read that one more Romans time. Romans 8, 28. 28. Romans. And we know. 8, 28, guys. 28. Yes. Yeah. There we go. So read that one more time for everybody. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All things. 
No. All things. It could be good. No. It could be bad. Yeah. It's anything and everything. Yeah. And like I said earlier, it's like as Christians, you you're gonna be you're gonna suffer as much as the next person yeah. next to you, whether they're a believer or not. And at the end of the day, when you hold true to his promises, his word, that is what gives you peace in those hard times, peace in that pestilence. I mean, and it doesn't have to be this virus. It could be the flu. Anything. It, you, you'd be surprised. Even the smallest things, it's just, it, it could be just a cough. Yeah. And it'll frustrate you. You, you, you could have something lingering yeah. that's bothering you, and it'll frustrate you, and mm-hmm. you can get upset. But at the end of the day, if you, if you hold true to his word and stick to it and, and work at it, work at it, work on that walk, work on that relationship with him, actually doing it, that's where you'll find the peace in all of these things. Yeah. And it's not easy. It's hard. No, it's hard. But deal with it all the time. You know, no one's immune from it. No, but true. the important, that's why I call faith, because you have to believe. You have to believe that it's there. He's there. Because mm. sometimes when we deal with these things, a lot of these things, I believe, are not intended. Like I say, he didn't create this world initially for us to live the way we are now. No, he didn't. It wasn't meant to be that. He we'll said say. it was good. It was good. It was good. Very, very this, good. Everything, if you look at it from a perspective, is probably not that good. I mean, sure, we can pick out good things here and there mm. in the creation, if you will. But ultimately, you know, it, where it says, where was it saying here? Um, you fall at the, the thousand, the thousand, the thousand yeah, and, you know, but is that going to happen when we get to heaven? No. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's like, in a way, I think through through his word, he sends a message mm-hmm. where it's like, look, this this world is not meant. You're not meant to be here forever. No. Yeah. Okay. I have something better for you. It's and and, and I think that's where. For a lot of us, it's kind of hard to see past that because all we see is this. Yeah, you can't see the unseen. You can't, I can't see, but I have faith. Yeah. And I have faith in those promises. And, you know, this is one of the things that um, a lot of people, not only Christians, um, they, they wrestle with. Yeah. You know, as Pastor mentioned, um, I do therapy with people. And the, the amount of Christian people that I work with this is what they struggle with. Mm-hmm. Why if I love God? Why if I if I walk with him, why is this happening to me? Mm-hmm. Well, we live in a chaotic world because of sin. Yeah. yeah. There's there's chaos and there's noise all around us. And Satan is going to use that chaos and that noise and the coronavirus to take our focus away from him. Yeah. But if we're not going to go through all of Psalms 91, I believe because of time constraints, but yeah. if we go to verse 15, 15? Yes. So we're going to look at 91 15. And I'll read it. It says, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. Mm-hmm. So the Praise verses the I read before says, A thousand may fall at your right, but it shall not come near you. But yes, verse 15, it says, We will encounter trouble. Mm-hmm. So I think the, the, a lot of people may look at it as a contradiction. Mm-hmm. But I think it. what it says is, though, trouble will come to you, mm. but I will be with you, mm. and I will help you through the most difficult times. Yeah. And Aaliyah um, said the same thing. She says, I was afraid of my father passing away, but now I don't feel so much afraid. And that's mm. what Psalms 91 says, I will be with you. Mm. <laughs> Psalms 23 says, though you walk through the shadow of the valley of death, you don't have to fear anyone. Mm-hmm. In the darkest of your dark nights, you don't have to be afraid of anything Amen. because I will be with you. Yes. Yes. And just one last thing before I go give ahead. it to someone else. Go ahead, preach it. Yeah. Job, go preach it. Job was a godly man. Yeah. And he lost his entire family. He lost his wealth. Yeah. He lost everything. And he was dying because of sores, mm-hmm. because this disease had come Pestulous. over him. Really. And so he he went, he wrestled with himself, he wrestled with God. And he got through the end, and in the end, he says, my ears had heard of you. He's telling God, my ears had heard of you, mm. but I have seen you now nice. with my own eyes. Nice. So whatever happens through the coronavirus, whatever, because a lot of, of us are afraid, whatever happens with this, 
at the end, we're going to come out stronger no matter what happens, what happens in our families, what happens to us. We're going to be able to say, like Job, my ears had heard of you, mm -hmm. but I have seen you face to face now. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and what it gives me hope, too, is Job also said, though he slain because his friends kind of implied that he he would have done some kind of wrong that's and right. you know that's not true and yeah. he says though he slay me yet will i serve him mm -hmm. right. you know yeah. and that's where we need to be yeah. to have that trust in him yeah and i like how ruth charles you said this and i think it ties in perfectly god of the mountain is still god in the valley Yes, Amen. that's true. You know, some people yeah. like to say the God of the Old Testament is different from the God of the New Testament. Yeah. He's, He's the same, same. yesterday, today. 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 Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yes. He yeah. really did. And I love, and then it was so interesting, right when you said Job, Andrew Van Dersen said, I think the story of Job will be a great example to yeah. compare it to. Yes. It ties in perfectly. But yes. Michael R. Huff wants to look at Philippians 4, 6, and 7. So we're going to look at Philippians 4, 4, 6, and 7. 4, 6, and 7. That's 13. You got 13. Yeah. That was close. Sorry. Let's see what Philippians... I think I already know what it says, but let's look at it. 4, 6, and 7. Yeah. Be not anxious for me. This is a good one. Yeah. We got it, guys? Everything. Yes. All right. I'm going to read it. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. The Bible says this. Don't worry about anything. Mm. <laughs> <I wish. laughs> Don't worry about it. But in everything through prayer, no oh, man, and petition with thanksgiving, that's that's mm. something different, mm. huh? Mm. Yeah. And Paul, you are a strong, bold man, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. It's, it's definitely difficult. And we're actually coming out of time. And I and I, and I think I just want to, we're going to close with this and tell me what you guys think. Um, I think we can see it on the whiteboard. But I like how Miss Knight, I think it was Adrian. Adrian, yeah, you said that this was Eden in the beginning. Yeah. And he said, and he said it was, he said it was good. Very good. You know, everything. If you read Genesis 1 and 2, there was not an issue. There was not a, a, a hint of, of evil or corruption. Everything was perfect. But then who introduced it into the world? Was it God? No. no. God gave freedom of choice, and when there's freedom of choice, it gets risky. Right. It does, right? Yes, it does. And Ty Gibson puts it so perfectly because I was watching one of his sermons, and he was saying that we were the ones who put sin into the world. We were the ones who put sin into God's lap, and their God is holding sin in his hands. And he's saying... Okay, I can either say, nah, I'm good, and let them die in their own corruption, in their own sin. But God says, let me take this. Let me put this on myself. Let me, let me hold this, and I'm going to maneuver through it. And I'm going to work my way through it, all the way through it, all the way through humanity. So we read at the end of Revelation, or we're back in where? And sometimes, like Miss Knight was saying, it's so interesting. It's like, sometimes we're at this section right here, right? And we cannot see past this. We can't see all the way to this. Some prophets were given the, the, the beautiful picture of, of, this, of this last section. But for most of us, we only read the words. We don't get to see them in visions like prophets. So all we see is just this little section, or we see this little section, or I think, I believe, we're at this section right now. I believe we're right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Put in the cross. Oh, uh, we, the cross is right here, right? Yeah, and we cool. are right, we are like yeah. right here. I do exactly. believe it like, like Albert was saying. But we can't see past it. All we see is our certain, our, our circumstance surrounding us. But we got to believe. Like, like he says, like David says right here. He says, I will declare, I will say concerning the Lord who is my refuge and my fortress. And we have to believe that no matter what part of our story we're in, whether we're just in the beginning or we're coming right to the end. No matter where it is, God is leading us to one central and final destination. Amen. And that's with Him again, united. Amen. And the Bible says there will be no tears, no more pain, no more suffering. There will be nothing. Because in the presence of God, oh my goodness, peace be, is restored. Amen. Amen. Praise yeah. God. And so we, we love, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Amen. And we... Oh, we have something else? What's up? What's up? Deuteronomy 31.8. Deuteronomy 31.8. Let's go there. 
And that's from Ruth. Ruth, Deuteronomy yes. 31, 8. So Deuteronomy 31.8 It says this in the Bible Deuteronomy 31.8 to let everyone know again The Lord is the one who will go before me Oh have mercy Mm. He will be with you He will not leave you or abandon you Isn't it the same thing Jesus says in Matthew Mm -hmm. chapter 28 And it's a different guy from the Old and New Testament right Right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid or discouraged Amen. He will go before you and he will go after you. Mm. He'll be right with you the whole way through. Mm. And the, what I love about God is that he can see beyond what, what we can see in our mind. Yeah, mm. mm. We just got to hold on to him. Praise, uh, God. praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And we pray that this was a blessing to you. And yes. until this virus is um, is contained or or until, until we can again, we'll be having prayer meetings. But until then, we're going to be having this every Tuesday as pos- as much as we can. And next week we're going to be looking at a different part of Scripture. And we pray that no matter what we look at, that God can speak to you and God can help you in whatever circumstance you're in. Amen. But may we just believe that God is going to lead us back, back to the Garden of Eden. And we're coming Amen. to that time, yeah? Amen. We are. We're Thanks coming to the end of it. And we got to remain faithful and hold on to His hand. Amen. So we're going to pray to close. And please, don't forget to like and share this video. That way it can help others. Yep. Our Facebook page. Let know about. Yeah, let El, El Paso Northeast Seventh-day Adventist Church. Like our page and share our page so that others can be blessed just like you were. Shameless promotion. Yeah, Do shameless it. promotion. Do it. <laughs> Get it out there. <laughs> we're not asking for donations. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, subscribe to the Likes. Yeah, just Likes. Like, subscribe. Only donating your time to yeah. listen in. I could be one of those evangelists, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't just send any money in. Yeah. yeah. Let's pray to close, guys. Okay. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you. And we thank you for Psalms chapter 91. And Father, for the whole Bible. Because yes. the whole Bible is just the overall story of how you have come to rescue us from our sins. And Father, how one day soon you will reestablish that which you had established before. Amen. And Father, may we believe even though we cannot see. Father, may we hold on to you, Father, even in times where everything is telling us to let go. Amen. And Father, I know that if we just hold on, Father. Yes. Hold on, Father. I know that you are going to come back and take us home. And, Father, that is our prayer. And, Father, there are going to be times where we can't, and it's going to be hard to believe. So, Father, help our unbelief. Yes, please. But, God, I know you are big enough to handle anything we throw at you. Father, you have been, you, you will, you'll be with us. You'll be before us and after us, Father, I know. And so, Father, may we believe and trust in you. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 So we'll see you guys next week. Or actually, we'll probably see you this Saturday. We'll have a live stream uh, sermon this Saturday. So stay tuned, okay, guys? Happy uh, happy Tuesday. (laughs) It's not Saturday. Happy Tuesday. God bless. God bless you.